welcome to episode two on this glorious old Rover 100 from 1962. In the last episode, which a lot of you have watched, it's so far anyway, it's been the best video in terms of people watching it that I've done. Which is really cool, thanks very much. It was quite exciting though, wasn't it, you know? But it was long, I apologise. This one is going to be long as well. Um, and we've got a lot to do. So, the car, as it sits, runs, drives, stops, all of that good stuff. But we're not over the line yet. This morning when I went to move it, this wheel, the wheel cylinder, the brake cylinder, I think, has popped or something. It started leaking everywhere and spilt brake fluid all over the floor. So that's nicked cool so i've ordered a seal kit for that and the engine which is still not 100 percent because when i put this new rad cap on which we needed it blew something somewhere else so something around here or down there or the water pump has blown now i've found a fan i've ordered a fan it's on its way it should be here very soon so what we're going to do is when that arrives, we're going to pull the radiator off again. We're going to build a support bracket for the alternator. And then we're going to, because that's it's had an alternator fitted. And then we're going to attach the fan. We're going to find this water leak, put it all back together. And then I need to redo the timing and stuff because when I did it last time, I forgot to disconnect the vacuum. So yeah, a few bits to do under here. And then we've got to put all the stuff we've got down there like air filters and things back together make sure everything else is tidied up and then we should have a nice running car i'm also going to drop the oil again and change the oil filter like we didn't do in the last episode we did change the oil but not the oil filter because it was just dead weird man dead weird and then we're going to put all of this stuff on the car which is really really cool and try and make it look all nice again and in this big cardboard box is a front bumper that I bought for it, which cost me a huge amount of money. And uh, then we're gonna take it for a spin. So as you remember in the last video, we've got no lights on the front at all. Now we do have loads of wires here, and this is all, I mean, it's some of the worst, some of the best worst wiring I've ever seen. I mean, there's all sorts of stuff going on here. I don't know what any of it does, which is, to be honest quite frustrating and it all just disappears down here which leads me to think it's something to do with the headlights and maybe this is for the other side and it's just not long enough I don't know is there a circuit that we need to complete I just don't know what's going on at all and it disappears into this bit of the loom here which goes off into here and this is the where the fuses live stop and tail lamps stop lamps position lamps i think that is main beam side light <laughs> oh wow oh what a minefield of stuff oh god look at all this crazy 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 just things everywhere, all sorts of things. So that goes into there. This so this is the wire that the uh, all that cables are connected to, and that goes over here into these bits here, which I think are to do with the headlights. So what are these fuses saying? I'm going to check those two fuses for continuity there. And then uh, we're gonna check some of these for power and stuff. Let's also just have a quick look in here and up towards that headlight. And this, oh, hello. Oh, what's all this? Ah, more wiring just hidden down there from the side light and indicator. Interesting, so they're just dangling down there. Right, I see, okay. And some cables look like they were this welding along here. 
looks really good, doesn't it? Can you see that? <laughs> it's fine, it's fine. Uh, so I did see some cables, but they're not coming through here. Right, so let's see if one of these things are on earth. So ignition off, not getting any power to any of those. Ignition on. Still nothing. Lights on. And I'm getting 12 volts to this chap here. Or 10.59 to this chap here. With the lights on. So I'm pretty confident that this is the sort of headlight loom, if that's what you want to call it. Bloody hell. I've just noticed a change in tone from the fuel pump. When I turn the wipers on. That's annoying, that usually works. So the indicator works on here. Let's just do a little experiment. So there's a wire going to the back of this which is here so let's expose a bit of the wire like so get ourselves a set of cable extenders these things here will this be long enough i hope so let me go back now i wonder if let's try another bulb but that bulb does look like it's okay Oh, we have a light source. It's the dimmest indicator bulb in the world. Right, so we need to get a new bulb for there. And it's really dim, but that could be because the earth's really bad or um, it's only five volts going across there. So maybe we need a bit more power in the battery or something. But either way, that's what that wire does. Cool. So now we know what that wire does. It's for this indicator here. I'm going to make a new wire going from there to here and then tidy all this stuff up. Whoa, 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 whoa. A lot of it is still very live, so let's just unplug that battery for a moment. There we go. Um, and yeah, I'm just going to sort of have a little bit of a look at this, tidy a lot of this stuff up because a lot of it is split. I don't know if you can see. So yeah, we're going to go through it all with a bit more detail. So I'm just getting all this stuff wired in a bit nicer with a couple of little plugs on there so it's easy to go in and out. I'm going to run it across there or sort of round and I've got a little bit of, uh, where's it gone, there it is, conduit. So we'll put all the wires in that as well to stop them all rubbing and melting and doing all that stuff that these things have been doing. Next job though, I've got to pull the headlights out, get to the wiring for those, see what's going on. This headlight's now out and I've just put the earth, I think that's the earth, I'd imagine so, sort of connected with these here. And I'm just going to try these two and, you'll, and they've got a red and a white bit of colouring on them. When I connect the red one, you've got a headlight. Now when I connect the white one as well, that looks like your main, your, your high beam switch which is very, very cool. So what I need to do is I need to find out where these go compared to that thing over there. Ah, easy. I've sort of connected some stuff up. <coughs> I have a clue. Uh, right, headlights. Right, so that's your normal headlight lampy thing. Off. And it's off. Is it off? It's off. And then, and it's on. Great. I'm hoping by now you're kind of clocking onto what it is that I'm doing. It's a little bit of trial and error. I could probably look in the book, but a lot of these don't make any sense, so I'm not going to. Um, so yeah, 
see you in an hour and you can maybe we've done it i don't know so the good news is we've got two headlights um we've only got them on dip beam because uh can get the flash to work the high beam um but that's fine that's going to get us on the road you know that's decent enough we will be able to see and we will be able to be seen one of them slightly uh, more good than the other because one's a lucas sealed beam unit and the other one isn't so there's slightly different bulbs inside but yeah pretty pleased with that you know um the indicators are working the headlights are working front and back just got to check that the brake lights are working and fix those if they need to be fixed and then that is all the sort of lights that we need the wipers is another thing that we're going to need for the road i would assume unless we try and go out on a dry day <laughs> um, in britain are you joking and uh yeah then it's just a case of bolting stuff back on tidying the engine up bleeding the brakes again getting everything bolted back on i'm confident good boost of confidence i've got to go though now because it's late and i've not had long on this today because i've been filming another episode on the land rover it's mot time anyway uh right i'll see you in a few seconds sun is shining the weather is sweet as Bob Marley used to sing um, I'm cracking on with some other stuff I fancied a bit of a change of scenery um, as you could see and uh, yeah 
I've got a few nice little jobs done. I'm just going to throw the seats back into the car and sort of, uh, I might have a quick look at the wipers, see if we can get those to work. But let me show you some of the little bits and bobs that we've sorted now on this thing. Now I'm still waiting for the fan to arrive. So we've not done anything here apart from put all the lights back together, which is quite nice. Speaking of lights back together, starting to look like a real car. So we've got lights back together there and the bumper. But not only are the lights back together, check this out. We have side lights and obviously the headlights at the front. This is potentially the most legal car I've ever driven on the road. We've got brake lights. This could be a car I used to go home and back in instead of the Discovery. Amazing. And as you can see in here, I've given everything a big hoover out and I've given the seats a wipe down and it's all come up, you know, quite livable, quite tidy. I've done all the windows. Just trying to have a change of pace, you know. But I think it's looking quite smart for something that is uh, pretty uh, rough around the edges, you know. I think it looks all right. It's definitely something that would be acceptable on the road once all the front's back together. Now, this thing here is a right old mess. I was just looking at all this stuff behind it. Maybe that's why the indicators stopped working. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to individually pull everything out of here cover this and then mount it back on there properly so i'll do that as well at some point these are the old glove box hinges there which is all good um what else uh it starts really well at the moment as well while i was cleaning it out as well i found a second rubber snake Totally bizarre this. What, what is it with old cars and rubber snakes? Does anybody know? When I was doing the pickup truck a while ago and I was underneath it, I found this and nearly, well, I probably lost two or three years off my life when that fell on me when I was working underneath. Someone had hidden it in the chassis. I mean, great gag, great gag, but um yeah good good few years lost and then this was just in the glove box and when i touched it with my hand and i saw it move a little bit of a little bit of poo um anyway so yeah a few nice little jobs um i'm gonna have a little look at the washers the wipers so at the moment when i switch the wipers on nothing happens but i can almost hear like a current draw you know, from somewhere. There's continuity on that box there. What's down here? Is something unplugged? How can I get this thing off there? I need to just pull this out of the way, I think, because there's a wire that's loose under there. I don't think that's it. I think it's just stuck in here, but I need to reattach that wire anyway. Check it out. This wire here wasn't connected. And now look, we have windscreen wipers. How good. What a great little fix that was, like a two minute fix. Oh yeah, super happy with that. Uh, off. Oh, look at that and the parking as well. How cool, and on. I'm in desperate need for some uh, for some rubbers but how good how how good i mean all we need now i don't know if i mentioned the rear wheel cylinder had blown and i've got a seal kit on its way but if i didn't there you go i've just mentioned it um that's coming i need to do that re-bleed the brakes get this fan installed get everything worked out you know 
button all the engine bay up perfectly, get it running very, very nicely. Build the front end. I think we're going for a spin. <laughs> How exciting. Right. Hopefully there's some parcels waiting for me at home. I'll see you in a few seconds. Need that wheel cylinder kit to arrive soon. Um, but something has arrived. In there should be a fan to make this bit go cooler. And in that big box there, there should be a front bumper. <gasps> Super exciting. And that's gonna be the aim for today. Get this front end stripped down, start to build everything back up properly and sort of finally, um, and just make it so it's boom, you know? So uh, yeah, little bit to do, uh, but let's start by showing you something I found. I love old stuff like this. So this is a Lodge HF spark plug that I found in the car. And it's just a really nice old spark plug. I really like it. I'm gonna keep it. Never seen one like that before. Am I gonna start collecting spark plugs? Maybe, but I like it, it's really cool. Right, let's get this slicey bastard on here and see if we can't ah, get into this. This was from a, a Rover people part specialist. It's properly in there, wasn't it? From Richard's Rovers. Thanks Richard's Rovers for all Rover P4 cars, models 60 to 110. Cool, right, uh, let's throw this over there. Looks in pretty good shape, good enough for what we want. And there's a nice big witness mark there, so I know which way it goes round as well, so we don't end up putting it that way in. Don't know. Uh, anyway, yeah, so it's gonna sit like that and the engine will spin it round and it'll go whoosh make this thing cool great other thing though this cork gasket has arrived for the rocker cover and to ease myself into the day it's the first job i'm going to do Very nice. I've also got a new um, oil filter, but it's at home, I forgot to bring it. So we'll do that when we get the car up on the ramp to do the brakes, we'll get the oil changed again. Now it's had a chance to sort of run around a bit and uh, yeah, get the oil filter changed at the same time, which will be super good. Make it run super nice. Um, okay. Uh, see all this stuff on here? got to get all this off so I'm going to take it over there scrape all this off clean all this surface up and then put the two things together before I do that then <laughs> let's just check it is the right one yeah good enough for me cool um it still looks quite nice in there pretty decent should that be tighter I wonder maybe that's a vacuum leak Interesting. Ah, it was in fact quite loose. Let me show you what I've just done there. So these little brass pipes here are connected to all these vacuum lines and stuff. And they do different things. This one in particular goes to the vacuum advance over here. And carburetors don't like vacuum leaks because it just creates when they're trying to suck fuel in and all this sort of stuff, it creates problems. And this one here, that nut, was loose, so that was moving around, so that could have been a vacuum leak. So we'll just tighten that up, and uh, yeah, even if it doesn't make any difference, it's always nice to do, you know? So here's a little Tasty Classics top tip, which I nicked myself from an old Wheeler Dealer episode, Wheeler Dealers episode like donkeys years ago one of the really early ones with ed 
That is a plastic razor blade. Looks like a normal razor blade, but it's plastic, so it won't damage this very, very delicate, looks like sort of aluminium surface. Whereas a normal razor blade, you could quite easily take a chunk out of that. So this is great for prepping these surfaces. It just does a fantastic job. And there's just no, no worry about damage or anything. And they're so cheap and it's just, oh, what a great thing to have in this world. If you are thinking of um, doing your wrists or racking up lines of cocaine though, the metal ones are probably better for that like. But for this application, plastic, great, really good. Nice, really, really good. So what I'm gonna do now is just blast this with an airline and get any little bits of silicon that are left in there out and just run my finger, where'd I put the thing? And just identify any little spots I may have missed. And then of course you do the same on the head of the car, put the gasket on, tighten them all down. Happy days. Now that's all nice and cleaned up and ready to have the rocker cover put back on. Okay, right. Thread this underneath all of this stuff. and just sort of lift it up and manipulate the gasket into a really nice place where it's all sort of even around the edges and then clamp it down. Fortunately for me, I have the torque settings for this rock cover built in to this part of my right arm. You might not have that and if you don't, I would suggest using a torque wrench um and sort of uh programming it in looking it up and all that sort of stuff but thankfully pull up there so i don't need to don't need to worry about that you know and i refer to this particular torque setting as the nip okay so it's where it stops moving freely and you uh nip it up and you can feel just when it's right. Perfect. Uh, so hopefully that should not leak any oil down the side of the engine and all over the floor anymore, which would be really kind of it. Um, pull this thing off. So when I ran it the other day, there was water spraying everywhere, coolant spraying everywhere from the inside. Um, and I couldn't see where it was. I thought it was a split hose or something. So anyway, I've just pulled this thing out of the car now and you can see that bit there is a bit shifty and it's quite sort of wet there. So, I've got a feeling we might have a radiator leak, but how, how do we know? Well, you've got two ports there, one there, one there, and then this has got a cap on it, and then you do have an overflow there. But if I can block that off and shoot some air down there, and if we see any little bubbles or anything coming out of there, then we know that we've got a radiator leak, and then I'll have to put some stop leak in it or something like that, because I can't really get into the radiator this late in the game. Okay. So interestingly, that was under a decent bit of pressure and yeah, no, uh, no leak, which is brilliant news, but it means the leak's coming from somewhere else. Could it be the water pump? I've just pulled this sort of connecting piece off here and as you can see this is a really crap bit of hose and that's you know not particularly good either so I need to sort of sand this thing back clean it all up make it look all nice and replace that bit of hose that's just yeah seen better days you know
So I'm going to do that as well. So annoyingly, I've been left with just two bolts that hold the fan in. I should have asked to have a couple sent over. But at least I know what they look like. So I can try and find something in stores and then have two on opposite sides and stuff so I don't throw anything out of balance. Do those holes line up on there? It's half the battle. Nice. So, what does this water pump look like? That is wet there. Yeah. I think it's going to need a water pump. That is very, very frustrating. Um, you can see just in there, it's a bit wet. Wet with coolant, I think. Yeah, so you can see when I'm doing that, when I'm moving it, it just drips a bit of water from the cooling system. Just like that. So uh, <sighs> we need to find someone that can overnight me a water pump. So here's the sit rep. This is the last bolt. And a lot of the bolts have come out super easy. Three of them though, have completely snapped inside the block. Come on, please. Ah! Just a serious reaction between the different metals inside there just held everything sort of steadfast. <sighs> Fuck. So I've got quite a bit of drilling to do, it would seem, to get these four bolts out and then replace them with something. I have to try and match up the threads. Should be straightforward though. Oh, what a pain. Uh, well, I'm going to have to wait for the thing anyway, so we have got a bit of time. While I'm in here as well, I need to build a bracket for this uh, alternator. However, I have a, I'm trying to think if I've got anything that I could make that would have some adjustment. And I can't think really, um, because obviously you need to make the alternator be able to adjust. But I'm going to have a little think of that. And if I've got time while I'm waiting for this water pump, I might be able to come up with something fancy. Um, and also, do you remember the big uh, Chinese turbo horn? that was down there somewhere. Need to get that wired back in as well. Um, so there's a few jobs we can do before this uh, new water pump arrives and before I've drilled out four bolts. Thanks mate. One of the uh, reasons I'm taking this off now is because um, new water pumps online, again, you know, I say this quite a lot, but this isn't, like an O'Reilly's where I can just sort of wander in and pick up a new water pump for this car. This is uh, very hard to get bits for. Water pumps are available. I've phoned a lot of people and you know, people that you've suggested in the comments. And a lot of them want this one on an exchange basis, which means they would, I would send them this, they would refurbish it and they would send it back. Due to time constraints, I can't really do that, you know? So I've got to be a little bit more imaginative. So I'm going to take it off and I'm going to have a look at how this is held on and if there's a seal in there and all that sort of stuff and maybe it's something that I could fix. If I can find a seal for it, I don't know. But we'll get it off, we'll get it over on the parts washer and we'll see what we can come up with. As much of that in the bucket as we can, come on. Oh, we're out. Oh, doesn't look like it's been off for a very, very long time. Yeah, quite sort of grubby and just in need of a real sort of refurb, you know. Hopefully I can get onto these studs and twist these out with a set of mole grips as well with a bit of heat. We'll give that a go. That one, maybe not. But yeah, one, two, three, four snapped. Cool. 
and this is the actual water pump itself all the blades and everything look okay I've just given this a quick clean up and I've managed to get the gasket off in sort of semi one piece so if I need to make a gasket for it I probably could but I just wanted to bring to your attention how easy now you can sort of see how uh, water cools an engine. I was just looking at it then and I thought that's really impressive. So these are in really good shape. You know, it's a bit rusty in there, but trust me, I've seen some horrendous stuff inside there. This is actually really, really clean. There's no gunk in there, there's no crap. Didn't really want to chuck a load of sort of case seal in there or anything because it would just mess all this up. This is really, really clean. That water, you could swim in that, it's beautiful. But you can see that's a cylinder. There's a piston in there going up and down, all this sort of stuff. It's it's just incredible to see. And then and, and, and then all the water sort of around it. And if I feel back, you can sort of feel as the piston goes. It's just gorgeous to sort of see the the tech in such detail. But that's what you get when you take the water pump off. Really, really interesting. I hope you find it interesting as well. So the same guy that sent me the master cylinder repair kit and the rocker cover gasket class parts with two s's um, is sending me a rebuild kit for this water pump which is just going to speed everything up so i've got to try and separate these two apparently they're just pressed on so to try and separate them which sounds like a nightmare um, and then get those bolts out he's sending me a gasket and stuff as well which is great news um, and hopefully that should be a tuesday wednesday so we are cutting it pretty fine annoyingly um, but you know this is what we do i'll stay late it's fine um there's a few other jobs we can do in there before um with like the horn um and the other thing the alternator so it's fine i'm not worried are you worried i'm not worried it's a breezy man um uh, right i'm gonna get this thing into the parts washer get it all cleaned up and ready and then we'll start on something else nice the spicy kettle has been heating up now for probably 10 15 minutes just right. Um, so let's get this water pump cleaned. Even just making the, the water warm, it's just like so much better than cold water, honestly. But you can only do it for so long because the fumes, they uh, make you a bit loopy. <laughs> Uh, right, I'll do this and I'll show you what it looks like afterwards. That's looking really nice. Great bit of kit. Now, all these holes are full of corrosion. But I've got this. Bought this the other day, I just saw it on the side and I thought, do you know what? That looks so handy and I'll show you for why once I can get it open. But basically, you can attach your drill to different size cleaners. So I'm going to get one of these gold metal ones, the thin one, attach it to the drill and go bzz, bzz, like that. Great. Okay. This one might be too big. Oh, wow. Look at all the crap it's just expelling from inside that hole. Because the problem is, is all the metals are different. And when different metals get married to each other for quite a while, they will corrode. Oh, look at all that, you see all that falling out of there? Which would obviously make this very difficult to put back together if I didn't do this. There's also a couple of little gullies I can clean out while I'm there. Absolutely fantastic. Right, let's just give that a little rinse off again. Well, that's clean and drying and waiting for the repair kit. Let's crack on with some other bits on this engine, namely getting these studs out. No drill so far, and I've managed to get three of these studs out which is great fantastic just using heat and mole grips now this one i'm going to try and heat the area and then tap it around with a screwdriver and then see if that'll move it you know sorry i wasn't focusing this one here
I've put a little slot in it for a flathead screwdriver, hopefully. Right, let's go pop a purchase in there. Mm, turn, push, push, come on. Oh, yes, yes, she's coming. Ah, oh, come on. Oh, 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 oh yes. We are now back to a full assignment of holes. Great news. So I can leave that now until we've rebuilt the water pump and then we've got something to do then, haven't we? Right, see that there? I'm gonna make a bracket from that to that. Maybe it'll, if we can make an adjustable one. Let's find out. Do you like my orange gloves, by the way? Um, here's what I've come up with so far. So I've ground out a big chunk of that so I don't get a bolt hitting the belt which goes sort of directly where I want to go with something similar to this so these elongated holes gave me an idea for adjustment so if I sort of cut this in half and build something that looks like that and then we've got quite a large level of adjustment I've just got to make these holes a bit bigger and all that kind of great good brilliant stuff so uh, yeah that's what I'm going to do ta-da it's not going to win any beauty contests, but I've got loads of adjustment room um, in both of those. You know, you've got like that much on each side. Just tighten everything up and it'll be perfect. So that's the alternator held in place, which is really, really good news. Um, I've not got much left of today, but I'm thinking, should we have a quick go at this horn? So this horny devil um has got two wires one of them is blatantly an earth and the other because it's got one of these things i don't know what you put bolt through and the other is just this mangled thing now in the car there's one loose wire in the engine bay and it looks like this with another gorgeous chocky block on the end so i'm imagining it's something like that and then attach that to earth should we give it a go so I'm just going to temporarily earth the horn onto here because I think it mounts originally down to the wing down there or something in that hole. So I'm going to have a look in the manual that we've got and find out exactly where it does mount when we're building all the front end back up. But for now, that's a nice little earth. And then if you can't beat them, join them. Let's use this choppy block and we'll connect the other side up. Okay, now I'm gonna switch the power on, press the horn button. You watch this, see if any noise comes out there. Just keep your eye on that for noise exiting. Are you ready? Hey, 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 come on, you horny devil. surprise me if she passes a bloody MOT at the end of this but we're not going to do that because oh, I just, oh, sends shivers down my spine uh, right I think that's all I can do for today three days have passed which is which is totally fine but it does mean I've now got two days in which to repair the water pump repair the wheel cylinders, put everything back together, rebuild the front of the car um, and get it all bled up and stuff ready for a, a lovely little road trip. <coughs> now, thankfully, I got a new oil filter through the post. I love this. This is from Class Parts again. Thank you very much. So a, a big care package, thermostat, thermostat gasket in case I need it, the little pipe that goes from there to there, stay, from there to there, you know, all this really good stuff and like just more spare parts and things, great stuff. So I need to rebuild this water pump, that is the first job for today. Get this water pump rebuilt, put it back on, 
and then we can start adding things in stages like the fan and then the radiator and all this great stuff and new pipes and things um, and then yeah we can fire her up and see if it doesn't spray water everywhere for once that'd be lovely wouldn't it right okay let's pull this thing apart and by this thing of course I do mean the water pump I really need to like have a proper organised and tidy up I just need a little bit more storage for things I might spend um a couple of days or a day next next week or week after just trying to clear the space on my on my desks i've got lots of little projects and stuff lying around like there's a big outside light sort of kit that i've got there things to do for the truck like a us uh, a head-up display thing for mile an hour and stuff and just like yeah things that just aren't getting done. So I might spend a couple of days just doing all that and then clearing everything up, which would be nice, wouldn't it? And my parts department over there is getting a bit, you know. Anyway, this is the water pump and at the top of it sits this big, I don't know, sort of bondage looking device here. This is though, in fact, a big bearing puller. And the idea is, is that this bit touches on the shaft there and these bits just very easily pull that out. <clears throat> Has this ever happened very easily in the past? No. Is this going to work now? Probably not either, no. Okay, so, you know, there's no point sticking a load of plus gas and stuff in there to free it up because all you're going to do is make everything slippy and difficult to handle and that won't stay on. So, you kind of just got to go in like this. Let's just try. Oh, <laughs> it's going well, isn't it? All right, maybe let's try a different bar. Good Lord, is that actually working? Annoyingly, it's not staying completely centered. I don't want to go straight into sort of using heat, but might have to. <sighs> Whoa! Didn't like that, did it? I'm now going to try and clamp this without damaging it in this vise. It's starting to move. I can see it, the pressure that's on it it's just moved a tiny little bit, like a mil or two which could be enough Yep, there we go She's gone Come on! Thank God for that And we are out Oh! Still really hot. It's weird, isn't it? Um, so this is the cause of all of our problems. Everything inside here is bollocksed and it wants renewing all the water's been leaking past and just shenanigans. Um, but yeah, so we've got some witness marks and stuff so I know exactly where to put things and all that sort of stuff which is very, very good. I don't know how well you can see on here as well but it's also very important that this gap between, I don't know if you can see it in the light there, the impeller blades stays the same. So that gap there, which is probably a mil, maybe a mil and a half. So there you go, very, very nice. Let's try and get the rest of this thing get out now. I've just opened the packet from Class Parts and this is some serious stuff. Look at the quality of service here and the level of service like I'm paying him for this he's not giving me any of this for free but you know so I'm not like trying to plug him for any specific reason but look at the level of detail and everything here you know and just sort of how all this goes out I, you know I've, I've not asked for any of this he's just watched the video and said look you know I'll send you some bits to help you really really good and we've got a new um, shaft and everything with a nice new bearing in it new seal but just amazing stuff and that really helps you know if you're an amateur mechanic like me that sort of stuff is is very very valuable and even if you're not you know if you need to just have a quick look and see where things go to save you having to use your, your brain <sighs> 
It's not supposed to look like that. A disaster has befallen us. <sighs> so, oh, I can't believe it. Right, so I, let's use our heads, let's think. Any suggestions? But essentially this, the water impeller, which is supposed to look like, supposed to look like this, and is made out of some sort of cast, as I've started to remove it, because I can't get the bearing puller underneath here, there's just no purchase available because this is too wide and no purchase. It's just gone bunk, and this has just completely sheared off. So, I mean, it's a very, very old piece of cast. I don't know if it was a bit worn out anyway, but it's supposed to look like that. I don't know if it was it might have been cracked or something and I've just gone to do it and it's just couldn't take that final sort of thing. I don't know. But yeah, it's supposed to be like that. Um we need to go and see Dickie, don't we? Come to see Dickie. He is welder extraordinaire. Got a problem. And what I need is a solution. Well, that's cast. Yeah. That's cast. I've got no cast rods. Okay. And I can't get any until sometime next week. Cool. I'm on order. Can we just do it with something else? Because I need to get this fitted to the car in the next sort of hour or so. Not ideal. Not ideal. Ah, no, no problems, just challenges, you know. I'm going to put a post out on the... Rover P4 Guild now and see if there's anyone local with a water pump um, that I could drive to. And I haven't got the Discovery at the moment as well. Another problem at the moment is the Discovery is in the specialist having my wallet emptied into it, which is a whole another story which I'll get a video on. But um, I'm a, a, my only car that I can use at the moment is the truck, which does 10 miles to the gallon. So it's got to be fairly local. Um, oh, what a pain, what a pain, what a pain. Dickie says, if I get this off, we can have a go at welding it and see how strong we can make it. It's not got loads of pressure on it, it's just got to sort of hold still and, and pump some water around, so... Let me get this off and then we'll have a look. I've just had an epiphany. We don't need this water pump, do we? We don't need this water pump. We don't, we don't need it. What we need is that bit of the engine to be sealed so nothing gets, nothing leaks and water can flow freely round it. And then we can use any water pump. So you can buy inline water pumps which work on the hose. So you put them in between the hose and it's a little electric water pump and it'll just pump your water through. You can buy them on the shelf at Demon Tweaks, which is probably a half an hour trip for me. So if this doesn't work, because we'll do a couple of little tests on it first, but if it doesn't work, all is not lost, we could do that. There is possibilities. Because the problem is, is that this isn't a, I'll just order one and when it arrives next week we'll fit it and you know all this sort of stuff. This isn't that kind of thing. I have to get this video out to you on Friday. It's now Tuesday. Which means I have to finish filming it on Thursday. I'm going to Bruges next week. I can't... My missus will kill me if I'm thinking about work or doing anything work-wise instead of going to Bruges. Um, with her, so um, yeah, that's sort of, even though I've asked if we can film bits of it for the Land Rover episode, maybe we should have rethought that anyway. Um, so yeah, it's just a case, and the exciting news is that I have already bought the next sort of left for dead car that requires my attention. I haven't already bought it, I've, I've already done the deal on it, so I'm looking to hopefully start that as soon as I get back. Which again, means that this video 
has to be out for you for Friday. That car has to be done. My, my work here is done, you know, for Friday. Not going as well as I'd hoped. Oh, Christ, we're out. Let's grab this with a pair of pliers and run it under the tap. Because it's going to be super hot. Oh, okay, so I need to try and connect this back to the impeller and refit it all. Or we just put this back on the new shaft and we put an electric water pump on it. Whoa! Forgot that that bit would be hot as well. <laughs> uh, what do you reckon we should do? What would you do if it was you? Got to fix it today. What would you do? No one's getting back to me about having one locally, so... What's the worst that could happen if we put it on and it breaks off inside there? Is it going to do any damage? Well, hopefully the impeller part would just fall to the side and wouldn't block anything and this would just keep on spinning so potentially it wouldn't do any harm anyway it wouldn't it's not like it'd be going blah, 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 and smashing itself around hopefully This is an emergency repair that's probably not going to work, but we'll have a go. Nice welding mask you got in there, Vicky. DIY National Health. Burning cash racks off. <laughs> What do you reckon about one on the inside as well? That's what I was thinking about running it round. It's not going to do any harm, it's not, doesn't it sit, um, does it sit against anything? No, only the other side on the impeller should be fine. So it doesn't go much further than that, we sound. If anybody ever wonders what Dickie does as well, these things here are frames for horse riding simulators. Do you see many horse riding simulators, Dickie? Are you busy? Do I see them? How many, yeah. how, how many have you done last year? About 112. Yeah, 112. From all over the world. For people learning to ride horses, I suppose. Learning to ride better. Jockeys, polo, vaulting, <laughs> riding for disabled. Wow, brilliant. And they do go literally all over the world. Nice. I'll tell you what, listening to that, I'm jealous of that new welder. It's, it's really the thing now. Don't forget as well, if you're worried about Dickie's eyes with the welding mask, I mean, he can't see anyway, so it's not going to get any worse, is it? It's a lot of carrots. <laughs> right, I'm going to leave that to cool down naturally on the floor, as Dickie says, don't put it in water, because it'll cool it down too fast to make it but also just leave it to cool down naturally over there on the floor and uh, we'll fit it interestingly i'm just looking at sort of getting everything put back together now with the new stuff um and it does say um a new uh the the kit um you do the old kit anyway you've got a water impeller with it so it's obviously a little bit of a, a possibly a common fault where you know they are they do get a little bit brittle and can split so um obviously they were available back in the day and they're probably not now whereas all this stuff i'd imagine is fairly i don't know maybe you get these from other uh that fit other water pumps so anyway uh but maybe the impeller doesn't so 
hopefully our welding repair will work but if it doesn't we've got a backup now um, it's given me some instructions of how to do everything i'm going to do all this put it all back together and i'll show you afterwards How far do we go? That yeah, looks pretty good, I'd imagine. Okay, so that is the new bearing installed. We just got to put the parts on now and then put this sort of, put a big thing over this and just tap that into place. Yeah, super, super cool, super easy. Show you about the bloody impeller. This isn't actually resting on the cast, it's resting on the other side of the spindle, which is ideal. Resting on this not the best thing ever because this is made of toffee i've already damaged this just like moving it round and getting it off it's made of nothing it doesn't want to go on there does it oh so close just need a tiny amount more That looks so good. Now it says on here the distance from where's the bloody thing gone? Where have I just put it? Oh. From there to there should be 96.5 millimeters across there. So with the help of this machine, whatever it is here, you can measure that. It's 115, 22 centimeters out. That's not possible. What's that measuring to? Ah, sorry, I was doing it to there. My mistake. <laughs> ah, yes, look at that. Just on 95, good enough for me. So now we've got to get this other bit on and hope, hope to God that it doesn't fall to bits. It actually feels really, really solid, which is great. I'm just going to take a bit of the material off the top using this flappy disc. Where's my safety glasses? because the 400 comments telling me to wear them uh, actually they're probably quite good for the algorithm aren't they i should take them off right here we go now i'm hoping that the added weight of this weld which is going to be a matter of a couple of grams if that it's a very heavy bit of cast anyway i'm hoping it doesn't affect it but it does feel like super solid just fingers crossed this works if it does that's going to be a great little fix right i'm going to clean inside here out because we've got a couple of little welding spackles inside there which we need to remove um and then we'll press it on and we'll try and get the tolerance between these and the other bit perfect it's quite a soft little wire brush this so i'm not going to be doing much damage inside here Just a real nice clean up. I've got a clue what I'm doing. Uh, right, so got my feeler gauges here. It says I should have a 0.5 of a mil between these blades and this surface here, which is pretty impressive. So I'm going to start pressing this on, trying to push it from this bit here, not this bit here, because we've we've learned something today, haven't we? Um, and then yeah, measure it with that and make sure it's all good. This is not the best though in terms of like crud. Like, I don't know if you can see big holes and stuff out of here. And again, yeah, it's quite sort of damaged and a bit of damage where I had to try and drill a bolt out. It's just completely seized in there. So a new water pump wouldn't hurt it, but I think this is gonna get us on the road, which is important. And they're not, you know, if you don't mind waiting, you can get one for like 80 quid. So it's not the end of the world. Right, okay, so that is supported, but I've got to support that spindle end. Don't press it onto that because it'll just push this out. So don't forget to remove your thumb from here as well, you know, otherwise it'll be a little bit sore. And then bring it down square. Got to do it square on. 
Oh, on she goes. Now, is that the right way round before we check it? Yeah, is it the right way round? She's going on. Right, there's my gauge for feeling. Ugh. So those two together there is a 0.3 and a 0.2, which makes, that's right, 0.5. And I've got to make sure that it sits under there nicely. So let's go a little bit further. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, come on. Okay. And hopefully this will spin all the way around. Oh, it's just absolute perfection. I'm so good at this. Apart from snapping the thing in half. But yeah, so that's what it should be like underneath there. Nice 0.5 mil gap. <sighs> right, let's get this thing back on the car, eh? Oh, it's so much later than it should have been. The sun's creeping around the corner, which is my sign that the day is really sort of clicking on. But there's nothing we can do about it, you know? We've just got to keep going. I have to make this deadline. I have got the feeling this is going to be absolutely fine for life, this touch wood. But it just feels really good. Anyway. Hose it! Obviously our man was very kind to give us some new clips and stuff. Love these old clips as well, they're really really good. Um, where's my screwdriver? It's got a couple of dowels on here as well, which is very handy. And I cleaned all this up before in preparation, so we're all good in that respect. I am considering running a little bit of gasket make around here as well just because of how perforated and stuff this is. No, we'll do it without, we'll do it without, we'll be brave. Oh bollocks, I forgot to put the other bloody clip on it as well. It's hard when you're filming and nothing's going to plan and you're worrying about time and stuff and then you've got to... In the future, if you see anything that I'm, you know, not doing, can you just shout out so I can... So we have to do it again. What do you mean this isn't live? Oh yeah. We've now got a full cache of mismatched bolts holding this water pump on. Fingers crossed it's not going to leak. That would be very, very sad if it did, but yeah. Fingers crossed that's going to be okay. But if it does, we'd have to pull it off again, put some gasket seal on it, put it back on and just hope, because I just don't like the look of that gap there. I'm hoping it's just on the edge though and not where it matters. Sorry if you can hear all these chainsaws all the time as well, but they're filming um, Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3 over there at the moment. Um, so that's why. No, it's not really. It's, it's, there's there's a, like a reclaimed wood firm and their weapon of choice is chainsaws. So uh, yeah, we have, we have chainsaw music constantly, which is great, isn't it? Right, okay, so now I just need to put this thing back together. You don't need to see me do this. It's just sort of you know, radiator on here and all this sort of stuff. It's going to involve a few nuts and bolts and things and just, yeah, a bit of that. We're going to do that first, put the belt back on, adjust all this, and then we're going to fill it full of water and see if we get any water leaks before I start really getting into it, you know? So this is really good. You've got four nice bolts in the fan and it's all together. Belt's all nice and this bracket is doing a wonderful job of keeping everything nice and tight. Look at the clearance, oh, that's interesting isn't it? Right, get the radiator in. One quite interesting thing I have just noticed as I'm about to get the radiator in is that this is, is a big coil of fuel pipe and it's just not needed. It goes from there to there so it could just sort of sit like that. So I'm just going to cut this off and put it on there with a nice little fuel pipe clip which it should have on it just to make things a little bit safer because this could potentially rub you know all down here and on the belt and stuff and fuel could leak out and everything could set on fire so it's probably worth you know for the sake of a two minute job let's just tidy that up there we go that's much neater and frees up all this space down here as well 
Plus I get to keep that bit of hose for the parts department, you know, because pennies make pounds, don't they? You know, got to remember that. So the cooling system is now all buttoned up and looking pretty swell. It's pretty good. I've just got to fill it up now and we're just going to test for leaks. That's all we're going to do. We're going to fill her up, we're going to start her up and we're going to test for leaks. Right then, that's as much as it's going to take for the moment until the thermostat opens, so... Let's see if she comes to life. That was impressive, wasn't it? I haven't even pulled the choke out, but that sounded sweet ass. There is a big exhaust flow coming from there, which is definitely a jump for the next owner. Need a manifold to downpipe gasket. But the fan and everything sounds really good. It's doing a good job, I can feel the air flow. Look, yeah. Let me get a torch and we'll have a look. Should be okay. Fingers crossed. Last time it was running, it was just spraying water from the water pump, which it isn't doing now. So far, anyway, we still need the thermostat to open, you know, get some more water flowing round and then pressurise it. We're not out of the woods yet. Just see if it's charging or not. What did it do then? It is not charging. 10.8 volts. It is not charging. There goes the thermostat as well. Engine sounds so good though. Right, let's get some pressure in there and see how it does. So while this is doing its thing, I would like to just have a quick look for the massive spider that I just saw crawling along the floor. So I can show you guys who I'm working with. Is it under there? Where are you, you massive thing? Did it go back under the car? Why am I now on the ground where that spider was? That was a stupid idea, wasn't it? Oh my God, there it is! Look at that! Oh my God, is it a black widow? Put my hand for scale. That's massive. Jesus Christ. She's a big old girl. Right, let me get her a bit of Tupperware and I'll throw her uh, outside. I did just think while I was just sitting here watching this thing get warm and checking for leaks and stuff, I might as well do something useful. And that is to check this timing and sort of re-time it with the advance disconnected and good stuff like that, you know? so hot all of a sudden difficult to work on So it's like six million o'clock and uh, yeah, I've been having problems 
trying to time it, and as I was timing it, I was noticing that the every now and then it'd miss, and then it started to run a bit rough and rougher and rougher and rougher, and then it was just really bad. And I was like, oh my god, what's going on? The spark was just disappearing. So pull the dizzy cap off, and the points were, were burning up. <sighs> right, okay. So I regap them properly with the feeler gauges and uh, clean them all up and have been messing about with it since and I've got it to a point where it sounds pretty good so I'm fairly you know I'm thinking let's just leave that there for this evening um, and then we can get her up on the ramp tomorrow build everything back up and sort of you know see where we get on. I might need to, I don't know, we could have a road trip down to a place that sells distributors, couldn't we? I don't know. Um, anyway, it's cold, it's dark, it's time to go home. The good news is though, is the water system, which was a big job for today, is perfect. We've got no leaks, everything seems to be working well, and yeah, the, the car is running really nicely. So that's gonna do us for today. I'll see you in a few seconds. She does sound so sweet now though. Today is getting this wheel cylinder to work. So currently it can't hold its fluid and it just wheezes it all over the floor. And that means that we can't drive it on the road, which would be super sad. So we have to get these brakes totally boxed off. I've got a new little cap thing for my brake bleeder. So I'm going to take this off, put new seals on it, because remember these girling things are very expensive, and then we're going to put it all back together and try and bleed the whole car again, and fingers crossed we'll get a nice pedal, you know, because we've got new pipe at the front, we've got new master cylinder, got everything. And then the rest of the day today is going to be spent bolting this thing back together and testing it making sure that we're ready for tomorrow. We've only got one day before this thing is on the road. That only took sort of 10 minutes, but we're off and it is stinking. It's a very grotty bit of kit that, isn't it? Now you've seen me rebuild the master cylinder and stuff. It is pretty much the same thing. You just pull these off, pull the pistons out, clean everything up, 
and put it back together. I am against the clock. I'm not gonna make you sort of sit through that again. I'd rather just sort of get this box off cleaned, put back on and show you the finished article. Cause you've seen it all before, you get the idea. Um, but yeah, very, very dirty. And everything's covered in brake fluid. So I've got to give all the brakes, all the components, everything, a big bath and brake uh, cleaner and uh, we should be fine, you know? I know people always say, oh, but your rear brake shoes, I'll have soaked up all the, all the brake fluid and they'll never work again. <sighs> really? I think they will. Oh, I'm sorry, I don't think they will. I know they will, because I've done it a million times before and the brakes seem to work perfectly. Um, so, and again, this is only your back brakes. They're only doing probably, you know, 15, 20% of your actual braking, you know? They're not doing much, the fronts do the, the main bulk of it. So anyway, I'm gonna get this cleaned up. We'll get it put on and uh, bleed everything up. That didn't take long and we are back together. Bit of moisture around there is brake cleaner because I've given everything a real good sort of bath and a dry, make sure we've not got any sort of contaminants. And I know there's going to be some of you sort of going, oh, you should have put new brake shoes on it and all that sort of stuff. Well, there's another cylinder seal kit. So the next owner can do all that sort of stuff, can't they? They can put another seal kit on the other side, replace all the shoes, replace all the drums, spend loads of money. But these are going to work just fine. Trust me, I know done this many times before. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna put this back together, then we're gonna get the bleeder kit out, and hopefully, fingers crossed, we're gonna get a good pedal, you know? Do you like making a terrible mess in your workshop? If so, why not buy this product from Sealy? Now this is a sort of big cap adapter for this brake and clutch bleeding system. Now Sealy did think that all sort of reservoirs had this size cap on, which <laughs> it's just not the case. And even in modern cars, there's a few modern cars that have different size brake reservoirs. I know the Discovery's got a different size one than that. So they sell this, which is essentially a clamp on sort of um, cap that attaches to the brake bleeding system, but it just doesn't work. So what you end up doing is tightening everything down here and it all just spilling out the edges. So, Fortunately, I've got two very large C clamps which I've fitted and now it has stopped leaking brake fluid and I've been able to build up sort of 15 PSI of pressure which I'm now going to use to bleed the entire brake system on the car. Again, because we did do this in the last episode so I don't want to go over this again because we have already done it but just cross your fingers for me because over the next 15 minutes we're going to find out if I've got a brake pedal or not which is a huge part of driving this car <laughs> tomorrow. Good news, I've got a brake pedal. Come on! So, uh, I need to start building this thing up at the front and it's not quite as straightforward as I first thought. Now, I've not disconnected all this stuff yet because I'm still gonna give it another bleed a little bit later, but this, um, if I get time. So, this thing, right, has to bolt on to these places. You can see these holes down here, all great. So then I've come over here and I've been like, well, how come these holes don't line up with those holes? And I can't, I can't just bend it round. I can't do anything. Now, now look, someone's had a go, haven't they? They've had a go at this car. They've given it a good go and all the best to them. You know, they've tried, they've got off the couch and they've given it a go. However, they have welded this wing about five centimetres away from where it should be welded to. So, if you see this one here, you've got this bulbous bit is sort of right where this corner is here. It's in the same place. That one, not so much. It's, it's set much further back. Now, this wing is separated, it's only held on by a few crap welds across the top, but a pigeon shit across the top here. So I've got to cut these welds, 
pull this wing forward and just bolt it in place. Now, I haven't got time to get the welder out and start cleaning stuff up and welding things and that, but once I've bolted it all into place, it's a fairly straightforward job for the next person. Right, so I've separated that, and hopefully now I can sort of squeeze this together here. Let's have a go. Big old washer on that. Going to resort to more dismantling. If I try and unbolt this inner wing at the back, hopefully it'll be easier to pull forward. But I'm not going to take it all the way off, just enough to get those bolts in square. And then I'll pull it back in with this, you know. Look at that for a battery tray with a bit of wood on the bottom. <laughs> There's been some serious work on this car, hasn't there? Really good, fair play. Okay, so the inner wing is now off and these bolts are only that long. So my new idea is to put new bolts that are like that long, button the front up, and then pull the inner wing straight with this and then it'll all be proper nice and tight and if anybody did want to weld it they could just go across the top don't have to you can if you want um right bolts needed to iron this really but it's I'm just getting a bit warm doing all this wrestling of metal um this is kind of on now just sort of loosely for the moment and then we'll get it up but it does fit which is great and they're all tightened up at the back we need to now have a look at what we've got, lay it all out, and then work out the process for going back together. I am fortunate to have books like this though, which do give me a little idea of things. However, it's never as easy as all this, is it, you know? So let's just uh, see what we've got first. Okay, engine, engine, headlights. Now this is definitely for the front. I'm sure this is as well, but God knows where that goes. We're going to need this. And then the radiator. With a couple of captive nuts and some of the bits. Radiator, I mean the grill. Very cool. This piece of metal. Not sure if they have anything to do with anything, are they? I don't know, that looks like a repair panel for something. I don't know. And then here's something I bought earlier. Off eBay. Oh, 200 quid. Oh. Okay. Ooh. Ooh. Do you wanna do you wanna do this for me? This is this doesn't look very easy. Right, okay. Let's have a go. Upside down, a 
Give you more than half a year. If I could give you more than half a year. This is one of the roughest cars I've ever worked on. I'm having to like make new holes and everything's bent and it's not been dismantled this thing, it's just been torn apart. This is a bit of a nightmare, but I'm cracking on. I've only got a few more bits to go and then we're gonna look somewhat like a car again. Wish me luck. some old girl once again oh we're missing the hubcaps of course Aled's here being moral support as it's getting late we've got brakes the engine's running I'm worried that it's not charging so I'm just going to put a multimeter on it now and then we're going to take it for a quick spin in the dark and the rain around the yard just to make sure it moves and stops ready for tomorrow what we want to see here is 12 volts don't worry hopefully everything's going to be okay oh it's charging Excellent. oh it's good news isn't it <laughs> should be more like 13 14 but i'm pretty sure that is charging the battery's not that anymore than 12 volts I've 
on about the horn. Oh no. Just look that gorgeous. Oh wow, that's cool, isn't it? We'll leave it like that because I don't, I don't, I'll, I'll mess about with it in a bit and I just want to take it for a spin for it. Beautiful. Absolute Leviathan. Okay. Ready? Yeah. Yeah. That's it. It's all we've got. <laughs> situation we just didn't have brakes but now we've got brakes because i've just bled, bled it manually with Aled's help because brake bleeding kits they're just they're just not as good as a foot pumping you know um and the battery sometimes charges and sometimes doesn't and we're misfiring which i think is the points again but headlights work wipers work let's go for the spin It. So the phantom of the Opera Rover is being very much its namesake. So we just went out for a quick spin and we got like maybe 10 meters and we just stopped running and now we've got no fuel. And it's like seven o'clock at night, it's pissing it down the rain, it's very, very cold. Um, and yeah, we've got no fuel. If you look down here, I've just taken the top of the bowl off and it's just bone dry so i'm gonna go a little bit further down the fuel system and try and find out where this blockage is chuck some air down it see if we can unblock anything and see if we can get it pumping fuel again it has only got that electric fuel pump but i can hear it running so i don't know right let me have a dig and i'll show you just taken the entire fuel system apart and blown a load of air down it and it would seem that something had clogged up the tank so we've blown it all free and now we are running like a dream so do we dare try one more spin outside so where are we up to there we, it, I, we've run out of today today's gone so um I've got one day left tomorrow to film before I get this out to you on Friday. Now, it is very unlikely I'm going to be driving this to Solly Hill, unfortunately. I am desperate to take it on the road though. The problem we've got, there's three problems. So, problem number one is it keeps sucking stuff up from the tank for some strange reason it's just decided now, it's been absolutely fine this whole time, but it's just decided now to start um, getting clogged up. So it's sucking crap from the tank and it's getting clogged. There's probably a little sock over the thing and it's just full of crap and... Anyway, it's a problem. We'll try blowing back down it, it works, and then it just sucks straight back up again. So I need to put the little boat tank in the back and then that'll get us on the road. Um, next, it's not charging. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. It might burst up to sort of the highest I've seen. It's like 12.8 volts that's going into the battery. Um, I think it's the alternator. The alternator's probably knackered. Problem is, is I don't, it's, it's not from this car, so I don't know what alternator this is. I might have another one, will it fit? 
I'm going to have to grind holes in it and stuff again, same as I did with this one. <sighs> Problem. Um, and I've got like a weird issue with the starter solenoid. So if I stick tons of volts up it, it works. Anything less than that with this battery and it'll start a few times and then it's just dead. I'm hoping it's just a battery issue because this was just a battery I found in the bin. So hopefully it is just a fresh battery and it'll be okay. But that being said, these three issues I, and again, I don't know about anything else. I've not had enough chance to properly drive this thing yet. So I'm just not sure whether or not it's gonna throw up anything else. But those three things I can overcome tomorrow and I can take us for a spin. There's things we can do, we can go somewhere. You know, I wanna take this thing on the road. It deserves to go back on the road, it really does. It looks great in all of its sort of... In all of its finery with its chrome and stuff it looks fantastic really really does it's all a bit it's all a bit janky but it's on you know it's as solid as it's going to get it's this thing was taken apart with a crowbar honestly it's absolutely crazy but it's all there it's a proper little rat rod if we can sort these problems you know you stick an alloy fuel tank in the boot get the alternator sorted on it get a new starter solid it should potentially be a really reliable car with an alternator, you know, it's an upgrade, you know, it should, you know, it should be pretty decent. Bit of wiring, get a nice headlight wiring kit on it and stuff. Just, what was that? Things like that. But anyway, for now, I've got to get home, do some editing, and then back here first thing tomorrow morning to tackle this old girl again. I'm not giving up on her yet, you know, but she is throwing out plenty of spanners. Definitely one of the hardest ones I've had to do in such a small space of time. Realistically, the amount of days I've actually put on it, it's probably only, you know, 10 days, 12 days, something like that, to get it from complete dead car to this. Also a complete dead car. Right, see you in a few seconds. Today is going to be wonderful and there's nothing you can say to change that. It is going to be wonderful. I'm going to make sure it is. The Discovery is back, which is great news. There'll be an episode on that coming out soon, a short one, just explaining what's going on with it. I may never financially recover, but it's back. Now this thing, I've done a couple of little jobs this morning. First, you like mounting the horn, which is great. That's just happily sat down there now. And uh, I'm now going through the fuel system and it's working, but as soon as you move the car, something gets sucked up and it stops. And it's just not gonna be good on the road. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the fuel in the tank just by sort of every now and then I have to get my airline and blow back into the tank to free it up so it comes out again, which is a little bit frustrating and obviously not something you can do when you're on the road. So I'm gonna fill a jerry can up and fill my boat tank up using that method. And then I've got a fuel tank in the boot of the car that I know isn't gonna clog up. And I've got a jerry can full of fuel, which has got all the uh, four star additive what do you call it, lead replacement additive in there, so I know that this is all gonna be okay. And it's gonna get us for some miles, because I want to do some miles in this car today. I'm quite excited about it, to be honest. A Couple of other things I wanna do before we go. I wanna change the oil, I wanna change the oil filter, and we need to have a look at the charging system. <coughs> Although, I've got a few spare batteries knocking about, which I've now got on charge, and I'm just gonna keep these with us and if needs be we can just swap batteries and stuff you know if these things work i've been sat there for a very long time and it is very cold anyway i'm going to do this and then uh hopefully put it all together and we'll have a running fuel system and we can see if she starts up nicely you know does this just drop off when i undo this nut what happens It goes. Fell into the bucket. 
Okay, look at this old thing. Okay, just pop that somewhere safe. And that's your filter. And I mean, I'm no expert, but I believe that that is due for a replacement. Okay, right, let's just uh, run this to the bin, quick. And we'll put the new filter in and then we'll drain the oil. Oh, Jesus Christ. It's almost as though it should be two, two, two people to do this. Oh, God. Ah, give me one back. Ah. No, okay, I'll just lie on the floor. That's fine. And it's this bolt here. Can you see? You're going to get a face full of that though, aren't you? What size is it though? It feels like it's an 18 and I've got a 19 in my hand. Right, just move you slightly that way. And back. Ooh. All of the bolts and stuff on this car are completely different, you know. Some are Imperial, some are metric. But they're all... Oh, different and it can be a bit annoying can I do it without getting oil on my hands probably not I don't, oh shit. ah bollocks ah oh, drop the fucking thing fuck's sake where is it is that it quick get it no that's not it oh god there it is got it <laughs> Looks good though, doesn't it? But I'm glad we're changing it because it's going to be full of all that crap still from when uh, we had to unseize this engine and now it's almost a perfectly good running and driving car, don't forget that. Like... Oh! Drink! Ah. It's bloody spilling for. Does it work the same if we follow this down? So we've got like one litre, two litre, three litres? What do you reckon? Don't know. Keen to see how this engine sounds after this oil change, so it should be good. Just going to attempt to sort of turn it over now, get some oil pumping round into the fuel filter and stuff, and then we'll check that level again. The question is though, will she run? I'm not doing that, the start motor's stuck on. Why is the start motor stuck on? For God's sake, what's going on? Oh my God. Starter solenoid is goosed. Oh God, I can't get one. I looked last night as well. You have to buy like universal ones and sort of wire it in. Pain. That made some fun noises, didn't it? Our survey says... Needs more oil. Uh, which we knew, of course, because we haven't used all of this. And it does take, I think, six litres. Let's fire up again, get the multimeter out. And see what's happening in terms of charging. I might swap the battery over to another battery as well, just to see if we can rule that out as a thing. But I've never seen a battery being the cause of an alternator not charging. Anyway.
This is only a little 063 I'm putting in here, which is definitely not big enough, but I've got the feeling it's a good battery. <laughs> Guess that answers uh, that question. Uh, right. Jump pack. I'm not going to have this jump pack when we're out on the road. That's one thing that really sort of worries me. Thirteen point two volts, which does kind of mean it's charging. Yeah, the alternator's just put it out just under 14 volts, so it is charging. We have got a problem with the starter solenoid, and maybe I need to get a better battery. Might take the one off the Spitfire. Why did it die? Ah. No dice. You were charging, what's the problem? Are you really going to tell me it's the battery? I just don't think it is. I think what wouldn't go amiss as well is totally new battery cables and stuff on everything. I mean, they're all right, but they could be better. They could all be better. Everything is very old. New battery cables, new starter cables, the lot, you know. took off last night is now leaking everywhere so is that a gasket thing I do have another gasket for it thankfully old gasket nice new cork gasket stick this in Sort 
don't want to have to take the carb apart. It's pumping fuel into there, but just not wanting to rev up. Why not? Let's just dig into the uh, sort of float chamber here and see if it's got any fuel in it. In a mad world something might be blocked in there and it's just letting the engine take tiny little sips instead of all the fuel that it needs because it sounds like fuel starvation to me. Why are we still doing this? This car, it would seem, does not want to go back on the road and I am running out of daytime. I mean, there's fuel in there. It would seem that, that is not our culprit. We've got like a catastrophic air leak or something somewhere, but if so, why is it only just coming now? What was that? So, while I'm looking around for obvious things that have gone wrong, I have noticed there's a drip, drip, drip from this sort of uh, where it goes into the heater matrix there is drip drip dripping from a pipe oh yeah you can see the pipe split there for god jesus christ can I not catch a break oh christ look at that um right <laughs> let me have a look at that this is the quite specifically shaped piece of hose uh, that has perished and it's perished there and most importantly just on the end there now I can do the old trick of sort of reducing this in length and clamping it on a little bit further down there and trying that because I've not got a bit of hose shaped like that funnily enough have you? <laughs> oh, right okay let me do that we'll put it back on and we'll see if it leaks again and see if it starts again and see if it runs it's just pouring all of its water over the floor now as well why doesn't this thing run? what's going on? it doesn't want to go back on the road does it? some cars do some cars don't this is I dare I say it, this is almost becoming a little bit reminiscent of the scimitar, if you remember that one. <coughs> Excuse me, just forget everything that I just said because it turns out I do have the right size piece of hose lying around, which is a bit of a turn up for the box, isn't it? That never usually happens to me, but I thought I would just go and check. So uh, it's not going to be exactly folded like this, but it's going to be able to work. So I'm going to put this on. Cool! Come on then, what other problems can you possibly throw against me? <laughs> Probably shouldn't have said that. <laughs>
fidgety midgets whether Cinderella would go to the ball. And our survey said, no. <sighs> well, I tried, I tried my best. I've just run out of time. Tomorrow, I am going to Bruges. And you're coming with me as well, by the way. I'm filming something for a Land Rover episode, but I'm going to Bruges tomorrow. Realistically, did I want to try and just go push and push and push and push and then go out on the road, it's getting dark, all this sort of stuff. Or do I know when to quit? Tie in the workshop, make sure everything's nice for when I get back and for when I do episode three on the Rover. We've just run out of time and I want to get something out to you this Friday before I go away. But there is going to be an episode three. I need to order some parts. My coil is getting very hot. I don't think we've got a ballast resistor. Well, I know we haven't got a ballast resistor. And I'm wondering if we need a ballast resistor. And my heart is saying we do. Because the coil is getting too hot. My points are burning out. And that points to just too much voltage going on. So I need to get a ballast resistor in there. I'm getting, I'm getting 12 volts at the coil where I should be getting a lot less than that. So, when it's running. So I need a ballast resistor. The distributor is a bit rubbish. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try the ballast resistor, I'm gonna order some more points, get those put on and just see if that works. If it doesn't, I'm gonna try and rebuild the old distributor. This one that's in there now, every component moves slightly and I just don't think that's good for the, for the, for the distributor, for the car, for the ignition system. Uh, the oil filter housing, the seal, hasn't sealed and it poured oil all over my floor which was one of the straws that broke the camel's back today but anyway so i need to get another seal for that and just refit that from underneath where i can see it all properly but a bit of a funny design anyway uh what else the battery and the battery wires and the start motor wires or want replacing. I'm gonna order, I need to do this with other cars as well. So I'm gonna order some stuff, some tools, big crimping tools, lots of big ends and all this sort of stuff in bulk from probably from car part supplies, uh, car builder supplies, and load a big chunky red cable, load a big chunky black cable, and just make a load of new cables for this. So I need the one that goes from the start solenoid to the start motor, and then the negative uh, cable and the positive cable for the battery. And I also need a starter solenoid, because something is wrong with that starter solenoid. If you move it about, it works, so something's wrong with it inside. I'm gonna have to get a universal one and wire it up, that's going to take some thinking and some time so there's just there's no time for any of this I'm, I'm you know it's one of those things i need to do this car justice i want it to get to a point where the new owner all they've got to do is worry about how it looks wouldn't that be cool to just get a car that was properly on the button and all you had to do was worry about how it looks so that's what i'm going to do i'm going to do it justice this big old anti-rover but anyway, look, I hope the ending to this video hasn't disappointed you. I hope it's still been an enjoyable watch. We've covered loads of stuff on this car. We really have. Um, and yeah, it's back together. It is one. It is a car again. It's just got a few niggles that need sorting out, you know, which will do. But yeah, so, um, so I'll see you in the next episode, number three which could be in a few weeks time. In between then, we're gonna see a Land Rover episode and probably the next Left for Dead abandoned car that needs rescuing, because I think I've got one on its way. So we'll, we'll have another one in between, but don't forget about this thing, you will see it again. And as well, don't forget, drop me a subscribe. If you've, if you've enjoyed any of this, if you found any bit of it enjoyable, what about the bit where I knocked the start motor thing over? That was funny, wasn't it? anything like that just jump out and just hit the subscribe button if you subscribe it helps me out so much in the first episode of this like 170 180 thousand people watched it just if a half of you went out and hit the subscribe button that would be pretty cool wouldn't it um, i'm knocking on the door with 30 thousand, which is really interesting i'd like to see it sort of go over that but yeah just yeah thank you thank you for watching and i will see you 
in the next episode. Bye.